Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm excited to announce that this month I'm giving away seven winning gift packets to subscribers of my channel. So all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel and then be active in the comments in order to win. I pick at random a video and then I pick at random a comment and that will be the winner. Um, I usually have one of my kids or my girlfriend pick out random numbers anywhere from one to say 300 depending on the number of comments or videos and then that is the winning number of comment and I'll leave you a comment as you guys can see if you've been watching my channel for a while the last three months I've been doing winners and the last three months um, I've had some good feedback from those winners on receiving their SARMs I actually have two of the winners over the last two months this last month I did two winners the month before I did one the winner last month or a month before last and one of the winners this last month were actually in the UK and so I'm actually able to ship them SARMs directly from Kimyo for their winning but this month I'm giving out seven bottles of SARMs I have everything from S23, Ravelin 40, Carterine, Austrian and so each winner each of the seven winners is going to get a bottle of, of SARMs and a dad bod t-shirt so once again obviously SARMs are not meant for human consumption these aren't for you to take they're for your lab rat so this is just my way of giving back as a thank you to you guys for supporting this channel. I really appreciate all the feedback and support I've been getting from you guys. Um, seeing this channel grow, even though it's been slow so far, it's, it's really enjoyable. And uh, with the new website coming online soon, hopefully by the time you guys see this video, it'll be online. Um, the content quality I should be providing for you guys should continue to get better. So once again, thank you guys very much. And like I said, all you have to do to win is be a subscriber and then be active in the comments. And unfortunately for this month, since I'm shipping these all out myself with a t-shirt, I can only ship to people in the United States because of the customs paperwork and the cost of shipping overseas. So each of these seven winners are gonna be somebody in the United States this year. And uh, all I'm asking for you guys is to share these videos, like them, turn on the bell notification, and help me grow this channel. So <clears throat> the topic for today is stacking SARMs. And there is a lot of information out there going around saying that stacking SARMs is counterproductive, right? That if you take more than one SARM per cycle, you're actually wasting the SARM because your body's not able to absorb it, okay? So I wanna break this down. And once again, this is my opinion based on my own experience. Um, I think I've seen good results with SARMs individually and stacked together, okay? And so this is my opinion. I've done quite a bit of research on it myself and I've had side effects in the past that might indicate one way or the other. So I'm gonna talk about those here. The first side effect I wanna talk about is hair loss with YK11. Okay, so hair loss with YK11 isn't extremely common, but YK11 structurally is very close to DHT, dihydrotestosterone, which causes hair loss, all right? So I'm on testosterone at a dose of 200 milligrams a week of testosterone siphoning. I have a prescription for it. I'm, I get my labs done by a doctor and get monitored. All my hormone levels are in a good, healthy range at that dose. My hair loss, I mean, I have a decent head of hair. You know, my dad is balding, but he's almost 70. And so I do have hair loss in the family, although it's not very much. Uh, my grandfather on my mom's side still has a full head of hair and he's getting very old. Um, and so I do have the gene, although it might not be as pronounced as it is in other people. Okay, so when I was taking YK11, my hair started falling out just in clobs. I mean, it was, it was brutal. I thought I was gonna go bald within a week. And uh, at the time I thought, okay, well, if I'm on testosterone and I'm taking 10 milligrams a day of YK11, which is considered a high dose, then that would explain why my hair is falling out because obviously the receptors are being uh, taken up by the combination of testosterone and YK11 and then it's converting leftover testosterone since it's, uh, the receptors are absorbed with the YK11 you would be taking the extra testosterone and converting it to DHT so I thought about that for a little bit and uh, I thought maybe that would hold some some water but then there are other SARMs like RAD140 that I can take up to 30 milligrams a day and I don't see any hair loss and more people see hair loss with RAD140 than they do with YK11 and I thought that was a little bit odd and I've tried stacking multiple SARMs together. So let's talk about that. Before I started taking testosterone, I would stack one, two, four, five different SARMs at a time. And I could see differences in the results depending on not just how many SARMs I was taking, but obviously on the dose of each SARM. And one thing I've noticed consistently is that 
obviously you have a point that you don't want to go above in dosing a particular SARM. Most people don't want to go above, let's say, 30 milligrams a day with RAD140, or 10 milligrams a day with YK11, or 30 milligrams a day of Ostrin. You know, so there's kind of like a ballpark limit to the dose you want to take. So obviously you could go above that, right? But then generally you start to see side effects. So let's say you're taking the max dose of one SARM. And in my experience doing so, I would get a certain visible physical result based on that dose. When I added in a second SARM, I would see an increase in results. Now keep in mind, if I was to increase my dose of say RAD140 above 30 milligrams a day, I start seeing side effects. So I stay at 30 milligrams a day, add in a different SARM, I don't go above that recommended level, let's say on S23, I only went to 20 milligrams a day, right? I didn't start seeing any negative side effects on that dose in that stack, but my result rate of increase did pick up. I did start seeing results faster. I started seeing better results. So I could see the argument that taking more than one SARM at a time would take up more receptors than are available, but that would only be valid if then you added in a second or third or fourth SARM and instead of seeing additional results, you start seeing side effects, right? So that's kind of my thought on that. So if, you're, if I'm personally able to increase my results by stacking multiple SARMs together at their maximum doses, dosages without getting the side effects of going over that maximum dose, then to me that says that I'm not wasting the SARMs. They're obviously being utilized, right? And so not every SARM is gonna be working on your androgen receptors the same way. Okay, they each have their own way of signaling. That's why each SARM produces different results as far as one might produce more lean mass, one might produce more bulk mass, you know, something like RAD140 might increase your strength more. So they each have their own effect on the body, okay? And I think that if you were to take the maximum dose of one SARM, standalone, you know, just that one SARM, maybe you're on testosterone, maybe you're not, obviously you're gonna see some kind of result, right? Assuming it's a legitimate SARM, you're gonna see a result from taking that one SARM, right? But then if the theory that taking multiple SARMs is a waste, if that theory is true, then taking any additional SARMs on top of that maximum dose wouldn't then provide any additional benefits, right? It would just go straight into either side effects or being excreted from your body, correct? So if I'm taking multiple SARMs and my results are improving with the addition of multiple SARMs, then that can't say I've used up all of the receptors yet, okay? So then that goes back to the original story of me and my hair loss with the DHT YK11 situ situation, okay? And now I don't any longer believe that my hair loss from YK11 was attributed to taking up too many androgen receptors and having the testosterone convert. I think that YK11 is close enough to DHT at the molecular structural level that my body was actually reading it as DHT and causing the hair loss, okay? And once again, this is just my theory based on my own experience and my own studying of this kind of medical stuff that I'm not very good at understanding. So I hope this benefit this I can't even talk. Hope this video has been beneficial to you guys because um, I think that there are a lot of people out there going around talking like they know everything about SARMs and they haven't even read the studies behind the SARMs. Uh, such as in my last video, I talked about post cycle therapy after SARMs, and there are a lot of guys, even in my comments, that are saying you don't need a post cycle therapy. And I read to you guys just a couple of the studies and the results of those studies proving that SARMs will shut you down if they're from a legitimate source. Now, that being said, if you're taking SARMs like RADM40, S23, LGD 4033, or Osterine, and they're not partially or completely shutting you down, they are fake SARMs. Osterine at three milligrams a day will shut you down at least 45%. LGD 4033 taking at one milligram per day one milligram per day of LGD4033 will shut you down more than 50%, and it'll take you more than five weeks to recover based on these studies, okay? And most guys are taking 20 or 30 milligrams 
of LGD4033. So you're looking at 20, or you're looking at 10 times the dose roughly, or more, you know, 10, 20, 30 times the dose of this substance. And guys are saying not to take a PCT after that. I mean, come on. If you guys are gonna be giving advice and telling people how to take SARMs, which they're not supposed to be doing in the first place, please don't be giving them bad information. Because the last thing we need is for SARMs to get banned like pro hormones were, or like some of the steroids were that were legal up until the 60s, you know? These products are very beneficial for guys who actually do the research, who go out there and read the studies, who do the blood work, you know, and actually track their progress. And if you're buying SARMs from a legitimate source, like the one in the link in my description, the sources I trust, now I can't say 100% that they're always gonna be phenomenal sources, right? But I can tell you that I take them, I've done a lot of research, I've taken a lot of different companies' products, and these companies are consistently producing products that show definitive results for me, and the results fall within the category of what legitimate SARMs would do at the labeled dose, okay? So if you guys are doing a combination of spreading bad advice and using fake SARMs, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of troubles out there in the community as far as figuring out how these things truly work, all right? So once again, thank you guys for watching the video. Please remember to subscribe, turn on the bell notification, comment, like, share, um, help me grow this channel, and hopefully you'll be one of the winners of this month's giveaway. Like I said, seven bottles of SARMs going out with a Dad Bod t-shirt. So I look forward to giving those out at the end of the month. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.